Tom Janicki. I'm with the Propane Education and Research Council. You may have been here before, so I'm going to cut my introduction short. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about propane at the end, if you need any information on that. Michael's going to be talking about a new product, a uh, relatively new product, certainly uh, high technology for propane uh, and uh, uh, to provide heat and power for your home. So, uh, Michael, without further ado. Thanks. I'm from uh, Marathon Engine Systems in East Troy, Wisconsin. We've got a micro CHP unit that we've developed over the last few years. Uh, if you're not familiar with micro CHP, it's an engine that, internal combustion engine, um, runs on propane. <laughs> I can't say the other fuel, otherwise I'll get hammered, I suppose. Um, what we're doing is, is we're using an internal combustion engine. We're creating thermal energy. We're able to take that thermal energy and heat a space, heat a house, uh, swimming pools, uh, multi-level apartment buildings. While we're using that engine, we're basically turning an alternator. We're able to make up to 4.4 kilowatts per hour at full RPM, modulating between 1,200 and 3,400 RPM. We're doing this um, basically with a buffered storage tank and a complementary boiler. We're able to work these two systems together to, to be able to put heat into the buildings. Um, we're looking at 65 to 67% of our energy is thermal and 25% of our energy is electrical. So that's kind of our split between what we're looking to do. Thermal being the priority, um, that's kind of the, the gist of what we're, we're looking to want to do. The, um, we started with the engine as kind of the core of what we're doing. Um, it was built as a heat pump. It was part of a system that was developed in the 80s. We took the, in the engine and kind of changed it around a little bit to make it work. It could work with our system, uh, some cathodic protection, some telecom, and kind of found out that the CHP market is really the market that we want to be able to work in and uh, concentrate on. Um, we've worked with a European company. Uh, we build the engine and the thermal recuperator that generates our waste heat, and they, generate, they create the cabinet and the, in the inverter that we work with today. Uh, we're looking to take the unit probably in the next year and have it 100% built in the USA. Uh, right now, that, that relationship's there just because we support them. We send, we've sent probably 3,500 to 4,000 engines to Europe, and they've got almost 4,000 installs in Germany right now. We're just coming off of our test market, trying to fine tune some of the things we're working on, and we're re just about ready for our distribution in the United States. Um, like I said earlier, we do some cathodic protection uh, where we're putting voltage into pipelines so we don't have degradation of the pipe. Uh, we've done that on parts of the Alaska pipeline. And we've also done a lot of telecom installations that are in uh, Ireland and through uh, parts of England right now. Uh, the engine that we're working with and the way we get it geared is our modulation rate is between two and four kilowatts, 4.4 kilowatts per hour. Um, some of the systems modulate. We don't have year-round operations and some of these systems that we have do modulate and run year round. Uh, in terms of in the winter time, we'd be heating the home in the domestic hot water. In the summer, we'd be heating domestic hot water and be heating the swimming, the swimming pool. Uh, we're finding very good applications with that and we're able to run the majority of the time. Um, it's kind of different than your boiler. You know, your boiler, you're trying to run it you know, and you heat the space and get it up where you have a nice even run time, but you're wanting to get it turned off so obviously you're not burning fuel as much. We're exactly the opposite. We're trying to create an environment where we're running the unit to be able to create that, that second source of energy, which is the kilowatt, because that's we're want, because we're wanting to use the same amount of BTUs that you have in place right now. Um, our fuel costs, we don't see on average where we're increasing fuel costs in the home more than, than two or three percent. But the definitely, if you look at, you know, uh, the, if we was to run 3,400 RPMs all the time, 24 hours a day, we're making almost three megawatts or 3,000 kilowatts of electricity in a month. You take the 3,000 times a kilowatt ratio of anywhere from 17 to 22 cents a kilowatt, you're making anywhere between five and $700 a month worth of electricity. So that's really the benefit we're looking at is to say we're gonna use the same amount of BTUs in the home, but we're gonna create this enormous amount of electrical energy monthly. Uh, we have some jobs through Connecticut that are running right now where people in the wintertime, once their air conditioning and their pool pumps are shut off, and they got electrical costs of anywhere from 16 to $35 on a seven to 8,000 square foot home. 
So we're seeing very good success in that happening. Um, the concept of the system is really quite simple. What we're doing is we're working, if everybody can see, is we're running the echo power. We're putting it into a buffer storage tank. We start to, we heat the tank from the top and we start to stratify the tank and build up heat into the tank. During that happening, different thermostats, zones, swimming pools, water heaters, whatever in the home could call for heat. And then we start to change and we'll start taking heat back out of the buffer tank. The echo power is running throughout this entire process. What we have is, is whenever the moment comes where we cannot make enough heat, and that's done by design because we want the unit to run all the time, then we'll have the boiler come on to complement that. If we size the echo power to set point temperature, whatever you're going to use in the home, what will happen is the boiler would reach set point and turn off. We're wanting to run that boiler or run the echo power all the time. So we need to have that happening, and that's why we're kind of undersized by design. The buffer tank basically is, is like a boiler now. It's, it's, a, it's a holding all the energy that we have. It is delivering the heat to the different heating circuits and the different zones that you would have, like an indirect hot water heater or all these different things. We have different sensors in the tank, so as we start to build up heat in the tank, we'll, si we'll sense that instead of hitting the wall and turning the unit off once we, once we hit set point, we'll start to see that, that, that stratification and we'll start lowering the RPMs in the unit so we can run longer to create more electricity and still using the same amount of BTUs in the home that we would have with a boiler or a furnace. And that's, that's one of the biggest compliments that we've seen to, to the Echo Power product. We've got a couple of case studies that we've worked with. It's been really successful. Uh, in Epping, New Hampshire, we, it was kind of the first job that we did over here in, on the East Coast. They had uh, two big Well McLean oil-fired boilers in. What they Oh, I thought he was talking to me, sorry. Basically what they had is, is you can see on the side and how familiar everybody is with boilers and things like that, but you know, two 400,000 BTU boilers, every time somebody would wash their hands in a sink, the coil would come on, they'd fire 400,000 BTUs of input to wash their hands in the sink. Basically they needed about, it's 14, it's 15,000 square feet and they had a heat loss of about 300,000 BTUs with over 700,000 BTUs of input. So it was very inefficient. What they ended up doing is they took the two boilers out. They brought our system in with a, um, I can't remember the brand of the boiler. It was a 300 something thousand BTU, 90% efficient um, condensing boiler. And they put our system in. They went to two 1,000 gallon uh, tanks of LP. And then our, our payback was instant over the first winter. I mean, like over the first few months, it was, now that was two years ago. And if you remember, oil rate was a little high. Um, but anyway, they put that in. Our anticipated was in the four-year mark. Uh, we're in year three of that project, and we're right on, on task for that as far as our payback scenario in the building. Um, the, the town of Epping instituted a, an efficiency standard to where if you come into to the town and you're going to build something, a certain percentage of what you do had to be either a certain amount of green-type technology or, or, or a certain level of energy efficiency to be able to get your building permit or to do a certain amount of remodel to a project. Um, it's kind of the first of its kind that it happened. And they've been a model to other communities in the last few years as far as how to get things like that done. Uh, they did put some solar PV in. And then one of the biggest energy savings they had along with the windows and doors that they put in was the Echo Power product. So we were very happy with that. And obviously that was propane, so everybody here was kind of happy too. And so far that's been a pretty good project. Um, def on some multifamily apartments, we're doing a lot of that work too. We haven't got into the thermal part of it, but a lot of the potable water demands have been very high. Um, we've got systems to where we're going into the boiler. Um, they, they'll put in like a thousand gallon storage tank for up to 150 unit apartment building. Um, let's get to that. They'll put that in. Um, basically, we'll have two, we have two of our echo powers and they have their boiler set up. Our echo powers run 3,400 RPMs wide open every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, doing nothing but making potable water for this apartment building in the Bronx. One of the good things that we're seeing in this study when we put this in is that the, the utilities and the, and the different people with fuel is they're offering discounts on, on the fuel. So if you use CHP, you're coming in at a different rate. Some of the propane contractors might see that and wince a little bit, but I mean, that's kind of how what we're seeing in some of these jobs in the East Coast. 
But what we're seeing here is that we're making just about six megawatts an hour. They have a high electrical rate in the Bronx at about 25 cents. And we've been seeing that $16,000 to $17,000 a year uh, annual byproduct electricity creation has been happening fairly con consistent. Some of the different applications we're looking at are obviously anything that we can use thermal energy on. Um, hotel, motels, laundries, apartments, high-end homes. Um, we're seeing a lot of these things coming into play where um, there's some reheat humidification on commercial loop systems that uh, do humidification and they got to have you know these different types of thermal energy applied into them. Chiller loops uh, that are coming up to temp. So the hydroponic farms, uh, we actually getting ready to do a big project uh, down by Chicago. Uh, they have they have the fish that, that swim. Believe it or not, this sounds crazy, but the fish swim around and they eat everything and then what they what they eat and produce and um, and keep fertile as far as the water is concerned. They have like five 1,500 gallon tanks that they have to keep at 85 C all the time. They spend a tremendous amount of energy keeping these tanks up to temp for these things to live. And basically we're gonna have our echo power units in there, they're gonna be taking care of all that. So those are some of the applications that we're looking that we could get into. Um, I had one more project I wanted to show you. This is a residence that we have in Dover, Mass. And um, he was the first swimming pool job that we ever did. Radiant heat, geothermal, a lot of big systems like that that we've been seeing. And what they did is they put the geothermal system in and they were running, the, they had their electrical load that they were working with and then they had our echo power unit come in and we were looking at, we were stage two and the geothermal system was stage one. And when the echo power would come on, they were looking at their electrical meter that they were spinning in the winter time and actually ended up switching the unit from geothermal being stage two and our echo power being the first stage. And that's been working really good too. Uh, obviously in the Northeast, uh, starting from part of Pennsylvania all the way up into Maine, you guys have a unique spark spread up here where your, your cost of your fuel isn't atrociously high, but your electrical rate is up there, so the spark spread has a really good gap to it. You come over into Wisconsin, into our area, our, our costs on, on, on fuel are a lot lower, and so is our electrical work. So the spread that we have on our electrical really isn't all that big. So. You guys have a unique situation over here, probably a more of a unique situation than California actually has. So those are some of the things that we're seeing that are happening with the, with the unit and where you can sell it. It really isn't gonna be able to be sold just everywhere. Um, I have the unit over here. The reason I didn't bring it up here is because it weighs 900 pounds. Um, there are some things in the unit as far as the way we collect the heat, the, um, the thermal recuperator that's in the unit, the way we take the heat out of the oil, uh, it'd be a lot easier to try and explain that over there. So probably what I'm going to want to do is we'll probably close out what we're doing here and we'll move over to the unit and then we could we could tour through the unit and I could explain how the unit works. I think that'd be a lot lot easier to do than trying to run back and forth and try and direct everybody to it. So if we could do that, I'll probably put this stuff down and we'll walk over by the unit. <laughs>